Hi everyone, uh, I just wanted to post a quick video um, in response to several comments that I've gotten on Facebook and Google Plus about a decision I've come to in my life uh, in the past few days uh, regarding marriage equality. So after North Carolina passed their amendment banning gay marriage and the recognition of civil unions, I was on the precipice of a tipping point. I'm almost past the point of getting angry about it now. Um, I, it just kind of disgusts me. And uh, with President Obama finally publicly affirming a privately held belief in getting past his politics, even though it's an election year, um, it was the, the, the push point for me. The point that kind of brought me to the realization that while I will never be rude, and while I will never be mean to anyone who has opinions differing from mine, it's just not in me, it's not who I am, and anyone who knows me knows that. I also am no longer going to accept abuse from people who call themselves my friends um, or call themselves my family and I'm no longer going to patronize businesses that spend my money to prohibit my rights. So the long and short of it is if you vote for an amendment or vote for someone else who actively supports an amendment banning marriage equality, you are not my friend, you are not my family, and I will not patronize your business period. And that's that. It's not a point of discussion. A couple of my friends have said, you know, it's important to keep the lines of dialogue open. It's important to not kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater. And uh, I felt that way personally for a long time, even though I had people in my life who I care about and who say they care about me, who have differing views on marriage equality. I, I still allowed that. They were still my friends. We just had disagreement on this point. And I just can't do it anymore. I can't. Because you can't look at me and say that you're my friend and think that I'm lesser than you are. Which is what it comes down to. Because if you're straight, you have the right to get married. I don't. You can get married and get divorced 72 hours later. Ask Kim Kardashian, or whatever it was, 72 days. Britney Spears, there's drive through chapels. The sanctity of marriage is a myth, if it exists at all. And to say that I'm going to destroy it is insulting. To insinuate that it's a slippery slope to bestiality is akin to me saying that your wife is a bitch. Like a dog. You'd come across the table at me. That's horrible. It's rude. That's, that's unseemly. It's ungentlemanly. It's unbecoming of someone who considers himself part of the human race. You would never say that. Why is it any different with my fiancé? It's not. It's not different. It's more insidious. Because people just take it for granted. Well, I'm done taking it for granted. If you say you're my friend, at the very least, if you're having religious, uh, religious objections, which I can understand because I've personally been there, I understand wrestling with those demons. And if you have religious objections and you're not sure how you can juxtapose these two, these two thoughts of being a friend with someone who is in love with another man and your religious beliefs, then have that discussion, pray on it, seek scripture, but don't put your religious beliefs in governance. The government is not the place to profess your religiously held morals. This country wasn't found outside of religion. It was found to not be a theocracy, so that those who want to practice religion won't be persecuted. And that street goes both ways. It goes both ways. So, unless someone can present to me a rational, factually based argument for discrimination in marriage, which I don't feel exists, you're just discriminating. You're just being a bigot, no matter how nice you are about everything else. And I'm done. I don't want it in my life. I have people that I care about and who care about me as a person in my entirety and who love me for who I am and love my fiance for who he is. And those are the people that deserve my time, who deserve my love, who deserve my attention. And that's what I had to say about that. Some people might say that I'm closing off a so many people that there's I'm leaving people in the dust and I'm just throwing them to the wayside over one issue. Well, what's an issue for you is day to day life for me. And if segregation were still in practice in this country, or someone tried to reinstitute segregation, no one would say that I was being over the top if I said I wasn't going to have friends who believed in segregation, who were segregationist or racist. They would say I was justified. They would say I don't understand how you were friends with them in the first place. It's not different here. It's the same. As much as people don't want it to be the same, it's the same. So, if this concerns you, maybe it's time you examine your heart. 
if you think that you can still be my friend and still hold those views and still vote for discrimination to be enshrined in a state's constitution, you're wrong. Because if I find out about it, if you tell me about it, I'm not your friend anymore. I won't be mean about it. It'll just be simple. If you were my friend, if you cared about me, you wouldn't write laws or put other people in office who would write laws that would hurt me. 